move on to our next video. We have our next speaker, Dr. Meeta Doshi from Indore, consultant uh, ophthalmologist from Shelby Hospitals, ex honorary secretary of Indore Ophthalmic Society, and who has held many. I think everybody should remain muted, please. Uh, we are hearing uh, noise in the background. Uh, yeah. And she has held many prestigious posts and would be showing her pearl for us. On to you, Dr. Meeta. Can you share your screen? Or it's going to be shown by... It's uh, going to be shown Mrs. there, ma'am. Yes. Right. yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, ma'am, for this opportunity. And uh, this case started off simply enough, like, you have that kind of thing, no? Ki routine case hai, kuch nahi hoga. So, and the moment you think that, your troubles start. So, the rexus was simple enough and was uh, completed fairly easily. And a routine 2 to 3 grade nucleus sclerosis was there. <clears throat> Hydrodissection was completed and I was able to achieve rotation quite well. But then looking back, uh, I always have a doubt whether I was able to rotate the nucleus fully at this stage or it was uh, not rotating quite that well. So then started off with the FECO emulsification. The routine technique is stop and chop. So completed the trench and uh, then went in for the chop. And the first piece went quite well because I was able to embed and then chop it. And the pieces were quite good. I could see the glow posteriorly and the pieces had separated well enough. There was a small piece which just came out and aspirated that. And then decided that maybe I'll have one more piece from the greater this thing, uh, greater slice of the nucleus. And then going for smaller pieces from the smaller fragment. So I rotated that and then went in for the smaller fragments. And then suddenly the probe went in 2D, snap. So the pupil dilated and then came down. And so I knew something had gone wrong there. So with viscoelastics and gentle manipulation, I was able to manipulate the nucleus pieces into the anterior chamber. And then as we have seen in previous videos also, reducing the flow rate, was able to do a uh, suprapupillary plane fecal emulsification and remove the pieces one by one. And uh, since I was uh, having suspicions about vitreous prolapse, we did a vitrectomy also. and was able to clear the vitreous which was prolapsing into the anterior chamber. Luckily, there was no vitreous prolapse occurring through the section. You can see the paint outline there. And this is one instrument which comes to your aid anytime you are uh, caught up with a problem. And with a very slow flow, just a drop by drop uh, rate occurring, I was able to remove all the particle pieces uh, which were there in the periphery. The IUL implantation was done. And uh, <clears> the <throat> important point in this is always have a support posteriorly in case the lens tends to go into the vitreous cavity. So luckily with that support in place, uh, the IUL was implanted in its position and was able to manip uh, manipulate it in place. And so that brings us to the end of surgery. But then again, the moral I learned in this case was don't become complacent and keep a watch out. Complications can occur anytime, but you don't have to lose your cool. Complications can occur in the best of hands. It's how you manage them that is important rather than having a complication. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Mehta. Uh, 
you managed it very well no doubt but um, there are certain uh, things uh, which could have probably been prevented at least for a beginner surgeon so that uh, you know if you've done many you can deal with uh, these things but uh, for an earlier uh, surgeon some of the things could have been was first of all uh, maybe we need not use a vitrectomy probe from the main wound if you go to the side port your anterior chamber would continue to remain stable and there would be more not more vitreous coming out through that area of uh, uh, pcr and the other thing which i felt was uh, one you could have injected viscoat and pushed that vitreous in that area of uh, rent instead of uh, continuing to get the nucleus out and you did a great job of uh, completing the phaco emulsification but it was also a chance that that pcr did not increase so if you had pushed visco and pushed back the vitreous that could have helped and probably this is also a case where you need to could have thought of using an iol scaffold because you know you still had a lot of pieces there which could have gone in and maybe you could have even thought if at all to use a iris hook in that place to in, uh, visualize that area is that area of pc are not increasing you know these are certain Uh, small small things which could have been done um i would want uh, dr saurabh would you want to add something here yeah uh, sorry uh, i think every case of pcr is a bit different and every surgeon approaches it differently and uh, i think surgeon knows best way to approach that case because as i said uh, every case uh, the hyoid is very different the vitreous is very different but uh, as you rightly said the basic principles remains same as she also did like uh, low flow uh, phaco and uh, putting visco elastic uh, mm-hmm. and i think uh, she could put the iol in the back which is great and uh, uh, i don't know whether the, the uh, rent was converted to a capsular excess before that or it was just a small rent that's why she could do it uh, i'm not sure about that no it was a small peripheral rent and she was lucky that it did not extend so some of the preventive measures is what i was uh, wondering uh, dr ramurthy or dr rohit omprakash would you all have anything to add in this i think, I think all is well that ends well and uh, she could manage it well yeah. uh, for you know the audience who are there who is there i think the first thing which everybody tends to do when she saw that the capsule had ruptured she took out the probe immediately without you know before without inflating the bag that is the first thing whenever you feel that you have a pcr don't panic at that point of time go remove the uh, what do you call uh, the chopper or whatever you have in the side port inflate the bag assess the situation and then go ahead in this case what i would have done is that i would have since she had taken out uh, say one third of the nucleus i would have done uh, you know pull the uh, pull the nuclear pieces supra capsular and done a use an iol scaffold for that matter so that would have been the way i would have gone round with this case and rest otherwise you know as she put uh, a a single piece iol i would have been wary of putting a single piece iol in the back with no intact capsular excess or in no intact pc uh, you know uh, a rounded pc uh, tear so with with not being sure about a rounded pc tear at times you end up with a very tricky situation so i would have ventured and done a you know after removing the cortex she the uh, the vitrectomy as it was adequately done i would have done dry aspiration uh, i would not use the, i would not have used that cannula for that matter transnon staining could have been done to really visualize and do things accordingly and i would have uh, you know tried to use a three piece iol and do optic capture at the end of the surgery yes uh, different thoughts to the process different ways by which you could have done the surgery and lot of learning had came come up with the discussion dr satyajit would you want to add anything or shall we go on to our next speaker we'll move on to the next speaker uh, uh, i i would want everybody to move their thing thanks a lot dr meeta uh, our next speaker you,